Well, Gary, uh, where do we start? It's, it's been an absolute roller coaster of the journey this season, but you know it culminates in in the second leg of this playoff final, and you know what's went on out there. Is, I, I, I'm struggling to find words for it, but you know, can you give us your your feelings on this? Well, first and foremost, I think the players were excellent tonight. You know, we had a ga game plan, a system. We knew what we wanted to try and do, and we done it. We got the goal exactly at the time that we wanted to get it. And, um, you know, at that time in my mind, I, I was fully confident we were going to go on and win the game. You know, but circumstances, a couple of decisions went against us. And we were down to ten men for the la most of the second half. But I didn't think you could tell. Yeah. I thought the effort that the players gave was fantastic, as it has been in the main since we came in. Um, and... I feel for them actually because the performance over the two games, we were the better team in the first half, in the first um, leg, we had a poor 45 minutes in the second and we've been the best team for the two halves tonight. So when you're the best team for three quarters of the games and you don't get through, it's very difficult to take. But you know, it is what it is, I wish them back on all the best, um, but you know, there is a, slit, a tinge of, Disappointment tonight because our performances over the two legs, we should have been in League One next season. Yeah, and, and to be fair, maybe just going back to Monday, where you know that that second half performance, do you feel that's just where we, we fell short? Yeah, it's facts. Of course it is. You know, we we had a bad 45 minutes. I addressed that after the game. Yeah. To yourself, um, and it's always difficult when you've got two goals. You know, if you just get beat two one. But the lads done enough tonight, you know, to get us into extra time. We just couldn't get that little break. Um, you know, I, I'd have to see everything back. I thought Uzi may have had a penalty. I'm not so sure Liam deserved the yellow card mm -hmm. for his second booking. If both those decisions are right, well done to the officials. I've no idea, I've not seen anything back. If those decisions are wrong, then that's two massive decisions that have went against us. Going down to 10 men and not getting a penalty. But as I say, I don't want to blame it on that because the officials may have got that right. Very difficult for me to tell, but the two big turning points in the second half both went against us. But the players were excellent, you know, and at the end, we can't do any more. We're playing, we're, we're finished up with the team 3-2-4. Three, three, you know what I mean? We've got two wingers on, two centre forwards, two centre midfielders, three at the back. We're going for it and we're going for it. And... Uh, it just wasn't enough. So I feel for everybody, but it's, I feel for the, the, the fans, yourselves, the chairman, the board, but I feel for the players, you know what I mean? Because the effort that they've gave us since they came back, you know, 18 games in 61 days or something, and still to be running like that, because I've no doubt, I've no doubt in my mind if that game had have went extra time and we were doing to 10 men, we'd have won that game. Because I thought Dunfermline, eh, Dunbarton Dumbarton looked as though their legs had gone. And we were still full of energy, so you've got to credit the players for that. But unfortunately, the effort that we gave just didn't get us over the line. I've got two observations, really. Um, one of them being the lack of match balls coming on when the ball was out of play, and, and also, you know, the amount of time that we had to go chasing the ball. Now, if, if you take that, as, you know, and, and what I said, then on the flip side, we should get the time added on. Now we get one minute added on at the end of the first half, and you get, you know, what you would call the, the token three minutes added on at the end of the second half, and we take care of substitutions. So, you know. Yeah, listen, it's difficult because we were expecting multi ball, so I asked the referee, um, the fourth official wasn't he too sure, but after speaking to the chairman at the end of the game, he said that at the start of the season you stipulate what you're playing. You either play multi ball or you play one ball. So that's fine. Um, so Dunf Dumbarton, sorry, I keep saying Dunfermline, Dumbarton's done nothing wrong there. The issue that we had was that there's no ball boys to get the balls back. So every time the ball goes out of play, it's taken 30 or 40 seconds for us to run and get it and get it back. So that's the issue that we get, which is fine if there's no having ball boys. But as you say, then there has to be more time added on. But you know, that can sound a wee bit like sour grapes. I'm just, I wouldn't have brought that up. You've asked me the question. Yep. I wouldn't yep. have brought that up for a reason why we lost the game. No. But you've asked me a question for the fans that watch this, so I'm giving you my answer. Yep. I would have expected there to be A, ball boys, or B, more time to be getting added on. Yep. That, but the multi-ball thing is fine. Dumbarton stated at the start of the season, they'd only have one ball. 
no problem at all with that. Yeah. As the dust settles on this season, and I know it's you know it's it's a question I'm going to ask you about you know a message to the fans for next season. No, we're looking forward to them getting back. Um, since we've came in, I hope that we've given them enough for the people that have watched that we've given them enough to come come and support the team. We're going to need it. There will be um, there will be changes through the summer as there is at any club. Players will come, players will stay, players will go, new players will come in. But then now's probably not the right time to no. talk about that, you know what I mean? But to the fans, you know, we're, we're looking forward to getting you back, we're looking forward to seeing everybody at Meadow Bank. That's an exciting chapter, an era for the club that's going to happen in the not too distant future, so we, we should all look forward to that. But it's like I said to the players, say to you, say to the fans now, see what I say just now? It, didn't he take it in? <laughs> Everybody's hurting. When you're hurting, you didn't really listen to the manager. That's why I, w I didn't speak too long to the players. I've been in that situation they've been in. I've lost a playoff final before down in England. It's not a nice situation, and the manager's up talking, and you, you didn't hear what he's saying. Yeah. You know, so I tried to keep it brief. I thanked the players for their efforts. Told them they couldn't have done any more tonight. Um, thanked the staff on behalf of the players, and says that I'll be in touch with them next week about moving forward. So, you know, as I say, a message to the fans is I'm looking forward to getting the fans back and actually managing the team in front of our fans. Yeah, and like you say, you know, it's a short break. When, when do you reassemble? Uh, the squad back? I, think, I, I, I think it's June the 17th, Calum. Yeah. I think it's so the lads will get 27 days. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have, um, we've got. Um, We'll have training, obviously. We're, I'm only taking three pre-season friendlies lined up. We've got, um, we went into the low one league for a friendly, so we're playing Gala Ferradin, uh, Bonnery Groves and East Kilbride. Yep. So we've got three pre-season friendlies and that'll lead us into the Betfred Cup games. Yep. My reason for only taking three is once you play the Betfred Cup, you've then played four games of that. That's then seven games that you've played before the first league game at the start of July. So I think that's more than enough, especially with the schedule that we've just had. So it'll be a slightly different pre-season, you know, they've not, obviously teams normally get four or five weeks off. Yep. But we, our lads only have three and a half, so we'll have a different pre-season probably. And then we'll look to go and try and go one better next season, that is the aim. You know, I can, what I can see, you asked me to give, actually give the message to the fans, the message is we want to win the league next year. Yeah, sure. That is, that is as positive a message, it's not just about making the playoffs again or doing one, but we want to win the league. Mm -hmm. And, you know... One final uh, question I want to ask of you, and, and I'm sure you're, you've, you've, you've said it previously, but your backroom staff, the way that, that these guys have looked after the players, they've nursed them back with probably injuries, and, and the guys have, have more than likely played when they've had a niggle. You know, you, you've got to thank your backroom staff as well. Oh, no, I, then I did do that, and I thanked the backroom staff on behalf of myself and the players, and then I went round and thanked them individually. You know, you've got you know, some nights Ryan, especially, like for example, the Masur. He's rubbing 10 players of that, you know, after, if we've had a heavy schedule. He's got arms like Popeye, you know, and Andrew um, has been great, you know, he, do, he, take, he does all the GPS for me, he does the players' weights, he takes the warm-ups, he looks after the food, like ordering the pizzas and that when we're at away games. You can't run a club without these people, the cat, driving about in his wee van, getting all the kit there and all yep. the, you know, and the, and the balls and all of that. You, you, all these people, you know, and mother staff, you know, obviously me, Grant and Eck are the ones that everybody knows, exactly. but Scott the physio getting as many players back as he can. Um, and even previously as well, you know, the team that James and Colin have put together, you know, they deserve a lot of credit as well because it, it is a talented group of players. Um, so you could thank everybody, you know, but honestly, I, I've been in now two months and um, the backing that I was told I was got to get for the board I've had, and it just makes me even more determined to repay them and, and, and to get this club into League One sooner rather than later. So that's got to be my aim now. I'm going to try and go and build a team to do that, build a squad. And we want it at this time next year when you interview me, I hope you're saying to me, Gary, congratulations on being a League One club because that's what we want to aim for. Yeah. And on behalf of the fans, you know, and, and the guys here, you, you've, you've given us a tremendous end to a season. Um, yeah, it doesn't we, mean much just now, you know. No, but I know, I know, but we, we thank you for that, and yeah, you're right, we're looking forward to next season as well. No, listen, as I say, it's a great club. Once we get the fans back in, we'll be even better. We get to Meadow Bank. Really positive times ahead. I'm just scunnered a little bit that we've not been able to do it 
but we'll come again. You know, there's no doubt about that. We'll come again, and uh, you know, hopefully, there's exciting times ahead for Edinburgh City. Thanks very much, Gary. Cheers.